Hi guys and welcome to the Sunday vidcast. Um, today is going to be a video on the EIHL officiating. Now obviously the officiating in the EIHL has been under fire quite a lot, a lot over the course of the past few years and its integrity has been brought into question quite a lot and so has the style of officiating and also the officials themselves. Now today I wanted to sort of put a positive light if you like on officiating. I mean I know it's hard and I know people sort of don't really see it in this way but obviously I personally am a football referee um, and I see it sort of as an official's perspective more than anything else. So I'm not the sort of person that really gets on an official's back in ice hockey. Um, so we're going to start talking about actually people's favourite official. So there's a lot of replies really to the um, tweet I sent out the other day uh, stating they're a favourite official. And Tom Darnell was the one that was mentioned the most. Um, Tom Darnell was mentioned about four or five times, um, in fact. So Darnell is really the sort of, people say he's the highest of the ranks. So um, it used to be Darnell and Hicks, I think. They were the two top referees in the di in the division. And obviously the bottom sort of referees might be sort of certain names. Obviously people might be able to fill in the gaps. Um, so we're going to start talking about like the referees and sort of what they bring to the game. So obviously we're going to start with Tom Darnell. Now Tom Darnell is said to have a lot of sort of banter with the players, with the fans. He's said to have a lot of that. And obviously coming with an official needs to be a lot of professionalism. And if there isn't the professionalism, then they're going to lose control of a game. So when they lose control of a game, it reflects badly on them. It sort of transfers to the fans. Fans get on the referee's back and obviously the referee then can ultimately lose control of the game if he doesn't control the players in the first place and if he doesn't sort of talk to them on a personal level. Um, and that is also quite a bad, bad thing, really. Um, if they lose control of the game, then it just spirals out of control in every single way possible. I mean, the fans go, players go. Steeler Dan goes, you know, it it sort of it ends up being against them more than anything. So obviously, Darnell and Dean Smith were actually the two play it two referees. Sorry that um were mentioned as sort of the best two to have. So if it's Darnell and Dean Smith, a lot of people say that it's nice to have them two as a duo really, um refereeing the game. Um, and obviously, if you have them two, then it does give you confidence as a fan. That you know the re game might be refereed very well, and it, it might also um, be officiated very well. You know, if the two referees are doing well, and the two linesmen will respond, um, if you like. So, um, and that brings me on to Liv Liv Anderson, um, obviously yeah, it's a EIHL linesman um, or assistant referee, if you like. Um, uh, so Liv Anderson came in last year. She was, uh, I think, she's the first female. It lines to actually officiate in the IHL, which is quite exciting, especially for the IHL itself and like how much it sort of wants to express in other sort of like departments, if you like. So, let's say that it has always been a male dominated sport with male officials, and obviously, Liv Anderson coming in, it's a breath of fresh air, and I, I really did like it. And she has really been commended for her abilities, and it's great to see, really, because at the end of the day, some like it can be daunting if. If you're like the first female official coming into the league, it can be daunting if you've got like people on your back, like all male players, you know, it can be daunting. And I really, I, I personally respect Liv Anderson for coming into the league and being such a good official, really. Um, her and Danny Beresford are two very, very good linesmen. And if it was her and Danny Beresford on the lines with Dean Smith and Tom Darnell in the middles, then you've got to appreciate that. That'd be a great officiating, uh, like, quadruple lots of people it'd be great wouldn't it i mean that gets announced on the tanner you're all up for it um obviously there's um there are some obviously downsides to the officiating i mean we'll talk about tom Darnell again yeah it's been said in here like he used to be like really good but now he's sort of a big time charlie if you like um personally i don't see that um personally i kind of like tom Darnell with, with, with his style of refereeing more than anything um, his sort of confident approach is sort of takes no crap from the players. It's really good to watch, and he when the players sort of respond to him, he responds back in a certain way. So he sort of if they talk down on him, he can talk down on them if you like. 
Um, obviously, it, it's not recommended, but when Tom Darnell's refereeing, um, you certainly know he's on the ice. It, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it, he seems to have like some sort of essence to him that's like, I don't want any rubbish from you lads, so you're not going to give it me if you like. Um, and that's sort of what I like to see, really, especially from an official. Um, and knowing what it's like in another sport, it, it is hard sometimes if you don't have that air of confidence about you and that air of sort of, yeah, this is how we're going to play this game, boys. If you don't like it, then you're going to get sanctioned for it. And that's what that's what I like to see. Um, obviously, if you look at um, British officiating from the sort of bad perspective and like the negative side of it, then you'd see that obviously sometimes it can fall underneath its own sort of um, standard, really. Um, sometimes it is good, sometimes it's good to watch, sometimes it's not. And sometimes it feels like you're playing a nine on five, as someone put it in the Twitter replies, if like, the referee's going wrong. And obviously, if the referee's going wrong, if it feels like they're going against you, then it's going to get on your players' nerves, it's going to get on your coaches' nerves, fans will be on the back. And again, it's always a downward spiral for a referee or, an, or a linesman or assistant referee. Um, so obviously, like if there was any suggestions being thrown out there, um, you could have training camps for the referees. I mean, I don't really see a lot of them advertised. Um, I don't see a lot of sort of meetings going on for officials or anything like that. Um, I'd love it if they were made public. Like if the meetings were sort of said, like, oh yeah, there is a referees meeting at this date. I mean, um, that'd be great to see, like, because then you'd know, like, oh, right, they're going to regular meetings. But if they don't, like, post, like, you're thinking, well, do they really sort of care, if you like? Um, And obviously the IHA are in charge of all that and determining meetings, determining who gets promoted, who gets demoted. I I don't really know how the officiating system works. I know how it works in football, obviously. um, But in ice hockey, I don't really understand the sort of if you get promoted or demoted. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you get promoted anyway um, because there have been referees that have gone up the ranks um, and some of them have certainly done quite well. I mean, James Ions, I saw him refereeing a a women's Premier League game. I think it was the Sheffield Shadows against Kingston Diamonds. Uh, Sheffield, um, I wrote a match report for it and Ions was the referee there and then I think it was the next season the season after that, he was then at the arena. And I think he got promoted that season, so he became a linesman in the IHL. And that's sort of, it's always good to see that sort of referee, it's sorry, linesman referee still getting up to that level and getting up to the standard. Now, obviously, sticking on with that um, is the four man system. Now, the four man system was introduced in, Dece- in after December 2017, I remember it, um, just coming in after then and what it brought to the game. Um, I personally, I like it. I like the four-man system. I don't think the three-man system necessarily worked, especially since the league was developing and becoming stronger and stronger each year. Um, I think the four-man system was a good thing to introduce. But what's not good to introduce in the four-man system is the fact that sometimes you have referees paired up with younger referees, sort of inexperienced referees, um, that possibly shouldn't sort of be in the league, if you like, but they're sort of there to make the numbers up, if you know what I mean. So it's sort of a case of an EPL referee stepping up to the IHL because there's not enough numbers to cover the six games that go on at a weekend or five games. Um, and that would be sort of the thing you'd expect sometimes. Um, you'd sometimes expect top referees to referee the game, but sometimes you don't. And obviously sometimes you do get linesmen that should be in the EPL or NIHL. It is NIHL now, sorry. Apologise for that. But um, the NIHL referees obviously step up um, and I respect them for it because obviously it's quite a daunting atmosphere and if you sort of go from Sheffield Steel Dogs on line to Sheffield Steelers on the line, that's sort of a four or five thousand difference and a lot more fans. Um, so again, um, it could be daunting for them as well. So that's what you've got to take into account. Now, sort of a new generation of refs, if, if you like, sort of younger refs, I don't really see a lot of courses advertised. I see quite a few over the course of the year, but it's not that popular, I've noticed. And there's not many younger referees coming through the ranks. And what that can do is once the older referees die out, the sort of newer ones won't be there to sort of take over from them. Now, if they're not there to take over from them, then there's going to be sort of, we're going to be in a rut. We're not going to really have many officials. We're not going to really have many 
to other people that can control the game fully and to their full potential. Now, obviously, it might change in the next few years. It might not. But who knows? And this was sort of, it was kind of positive, kind of sort of what they could do next. It, I didn't want it to be negative, this video, because I don't like slamming officials. I think they do the best job they possibly can. And I know sometimes it is about like, oh, yeah, we've watched a replay and we've seen this. The referee's got to make, so say an incident's happened now, that click is how long the referee has to make a decision. Sometimes it is about sort of where you are and where you are on the ice. And if you do miss a decision, then you've just got to put it down to your bad position and you've just got to get up and go again, really. And that's all I am going to say for this video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it and I will see you on Wednesday. See you later.